Not being privy to tomorrow is one of the worst things, isn't it? At least it's hard for some of us to grapple with the idea that we don't know what tomorrow holds and that makes life very difficult to live. We want to know if our kids will ever mature and grow up and make it on their own, how old we're going to live to be, if we're going to live to a ripe old age, will the weather and the storms hold off and, or ruin our plans, and even the best forecasters get it wrong because no one is privy to tomorrow and this bugs us. We have issue with it. There's a passage in James 4 that warns us about boasting about our plans for tomorrow, about carrying on and making money. This verse is not about wise planning for our future. Instead, it's talking about the attitude of prideful boasting. When we are boasting in arrogant schemes, that's what's warned about here, and that often happens when we plan ahead for gain instead of working today for good. So this one passage tells us that knowing about tomorrow can produce a kind of a pride and planning that prohibits us from total dependence on Him and recognizing each day as a gift. There's a popular verse in Jeremiah 29, 11 that says God knows the plans He has for us to give us a hope and a future. But when we start off in life as an adult and start looking for a job, searching for a home, and looking for our future and a family, even our best plans and searches and hunts often feel futile. We all wish God would send a message across the sky that says, take this job, or a big arrow that points to a certain place to live, or a definitive year and months that we will start a family so we can be prepared and ready. But honestly, God rarely sends signs like that, and instead, He sends Himself. This verse says that he has plans for a future and a hope for us, and he wants us to rest in that fact. Because truth be told, those terrible T's that we talked about last time are going to halt, interrupt, and appear out of nowhere. And if we don't know the one who holds our future and offers us hope, we will fall into despair. God favors that we know him instead of knowing his plans, and that's a big deal. I personally don't like surprises. I often tell my husband I want him to plan a date or something special, but then I want him to let me know what we're doing and where we're going so that I can be prepared. And he just sighs because sometimes I eliminate all the elements of surprise by overshadowing it with my need to be prepared. And I ruin the spontaneity of his gift. Some love being surprised and others are like me. And the honest confession here is that I want to change his surprise if I don't like it or tweak it so that it suits my needs. Could that be our problem? For sure, if God told us his plans and purposes in a text or an email with every detail of tomorrow and our future laid out, we would for sure reply back with our way, a better suggestion, a hand up that says, wait a minute, I'm not ready for that, or I have to wait that long? Instead, he keeps his plans in his hands and in his time, and he asks us to trust him. He knows we will mess it all up and erase and scratch out if we were given a pen and a paper with becoming privy to tomorrow. To be privy means to share in the knowledge of, and God started off with creation commanding that the first two created individuals not be privy to the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Yet they demanded that they be privy, and we all know what happened from there, the greatest fall in history of which we all still suffer. Asking to be privy to tomorrow is a big deal with God, and He'd rather us ask how we can serve Him and know Him better today while the sun is still up and while the sun is still shining. If we're too busy demanding that his plans be revealed for tomorrow, we will totally miss the beauty of the current day and all the steps he has for us to walk before the sun sets tonight. It's the way he works and it's the best way and we can either love it and hate it, rest in peace or wriggle and squirm. It's really our choice.